of today's function has arrived, and I request all to please welcome him with a round of applause. On behalf of DGPP RND, Shri Balaji Shivastar, I welcome our esteemed chief guest, Shri Ajay Kumar Bhalla, Honorable Union Home Secretary. Sharing the dais with him, apart from DGPP RND, Shri Balaji Shivastar, our ADGP BP RND, Shri Neeraj Sinha sir, uh, Director Training, Shri BS Jaswal, and Director Mod, Shri Karuna Sagar. I welcome you all also, sir. I request DGPP RND, Shri Balaji Shivastar, to welcome the Honorable Chief Guest by presenting him with a planter. Thank you so much, sir. Now I request for the DG BPRND to please deliver his welcome address. Respected Union Home Secretary, Sri Ajay Kumar Bhalla, family members of Dr. Anand Saru Gupta Ji, our founder director, who are present with us this morning, Sri Ranjit Gupta, IFS retired, former ambassador, and former member of the Prime Minister's National Security Advisory Board, Sri Harsh Gupta, IS retired, former Chief Secretary, Himachal Pradesh, Shrimati Anjali, daughter of Sri Ranjit Gupta, and her husband, Sri Rajiv Samwar, Ms. Divya Gupta, Dr. Sri Harsh Gupta. Sir, for some compelling reasons, the rest of the family could not join us this morning, uh, which includes Professor Srimati Meera Yo, the daughter of uh, Anasuru Gupta Ji, former head of the English department, Avad Girls Degree College, Lucknow University, Sri Madhukar Gupta, IS retired, former Union Home Secretary, and Sri Deepak Gupta, IS retired, former chairman, UPSC. Former Director Generals and other retired senior officers of the Bureau of Police Research and Development, CP Delhi, Sri Rakesh Asthana Sahab, and DGs CRPF and other DGs and other dignitaries from the CAPFs and the CPOs, Deputy NSA, which of Ministry of Senior Officers of the Ministry of Home Affairs and other Ministries of Government of India, officers of the rank of SP and above from states and UTs, CAPFs and CPOs who are virtually connected to this event this morning, my colleagues in the Bureau Headquarters, CAPG Bhopal and all my five CDTIs, friends from the electronic and the print media, ladies and gentlemen. It gives me immense pleasure to welcome the Chief Guest, the Union Home Secretary, Sri Ajay Kumar Bhalla, on the auspicious occasion of the memorial lecture instituted in the memory of a founder director, late Dr. Anand Sarup Gupta Ji. It's indeed an honor for us that the Union Home Secretary has, despite his preoccupation, very graciously accepted our invite to deliver this year's Dr. Anand Sarup Gupta Memorial Lecture on leveraging technology to make Indian police smart. Thank you, thank you very much, sir. As we are aware, Sri Ajay Kumar Bhalla belongs to the 1984 batch of the Indian Administrative Service born on the Assam Meghalaya Akada, with brilliant academic pursuits behind him. He rose to the prestigious position of the Union Home Secretary in August. Earlier held another significant assignment of Secretary Power in the Government of India. Ladies and gentlemen, it's a historic morning today when we've all gathered at the Sadar Wallabhai Patel Auditorium in the BPRND headquarters to pay homage to our founder director, late Dr. Anand Sarup Gupta Ji, a towering personality and distinguished luminary of the Indian police. We at the BPRND are extremely proud and fortunate to have a founder so accomplished and public spirited. He was born on the Christmas day in 1915, the fourth son of his parents. And right from his early years, he exhibited exceptional academic qualities, including oratory skills and professed extreme fondness for reading and writing. 
He was appointed to the 1939 batch of the Indian Police, IP. An intrepid police officer, he served as a superintendent of police in several districts of Uttar Pradesh and also worked as range DIG, DIG intelligence, and DIG training. He was specially selected to be the first Inspector General of Police of Himachal Pradesh. He went on to become a celebrated police historian as well, having written many erudite and scholastic articles on policing. He is also credited with authoring two police classics, Crime and Police in India, up to 1861, and The Police in British India, 1861 to 1947. A special mention needs to be made about his proclivity for writing spiritual poetry as well, and the fact that he could recite Shakespeare, Galip, and the Bhagavad Gita almost with equal facility. A multifaceted personality that he was, Dr. Anand Sarup Gupta, IP, brought grace and wisdom to all his assignments. More importantly, his legendary leadership of the Bureau, the BPRD, in its formative years, 1970 to 74, as its first director, set the stage for a cerebral organization in the making. In furtherance of Dr. Gupta's vision, the Bureau has grown considerably and established itself as a leader in ideation, research, and capacity building for the Indian police. With a long list of achievements to its credit, it should only be appropriate to recall what the Honorable Union Home Minister and Minister of Cooperation, Government of India, Sri Amisha Ji, had to say on the occasion of the Bureau's 49th Foundation Day in August of 2019, and I quote, BPRND ke achhe policing ki kalpana nahi ho sakti. Good policing cannot be perceived without the BPRND. Indeed, ladies and gentlemen, a befitting tribute to the legacy of a founder director, Dr. Anand Saru Gupta, IP. The Bureau of Police Research and Development has been striving over the last five decades to transform the processes of efficient law enforcement and service delivery by the Indian police. Technologies as, such as the artificial intelligence, machine learning, blockchain, face recognition, robotics, drones, augmented and virtual reality are assisting the law enforcement agencies to give them the cutting edge efficiency and also to enable them to re-strategize their response matrix. So, under the Honorable Prime Minister's Vision India Act 2047, the Bureau has prepared a comprehensive roadmap to achieve the goals with short-term, medium-term, and long-term deliverables. Towards this end, the BPRD envisages becoming a global leader in training, research and development, and transforming it into a vibrant, world-class think tank for the Indian police. Friends, Dr. Anand Gupta Memorial Lecture Series was instituted in his memory in the year 2003. Several well-known personalities have been eminent speakers at this forum in the past. In keeping with Dr. Gupta's quest for knowledge, the theme of this year's Memorial Lecture seeks to re reiterate the value addition that technology brings to professional policing. Sir, Given the overview that your position as the Union Home Secretary affords and your keen interest in adoption of innovative technology for smart policing, your vision to, will be a beacon light for all of us in nurturing the Indian police with the requisite competencies. I once again welcome our Chief Guest, the Union Home Secretary, Sri Ajay Kumar Bhalla, and all other dignitaries present here in, our, in the audience at the Dr. Anand Sarup Gupta Memorial Lecture 2022. Thank you and Jay. Thank you so much, sir. Bringing out publication is a very important aspect of functioning of any organization as it helps in cataloging the good practices and the good work done. The Bureau Keeping in view its mandate, routinely brings out publications 
which are based on the research conducted and the activities undertaken. Now I humbly request our Honorable Chief Guest, Mr. Ajit Mahabhala, Union Home Secretary, to release three very valuable publications which have been brought out by the Bureau of Tourist Research and Development on the occasion of Dr. Anand Saroop Gupta Memorial Lecture 2022. Out of these three publications, two publications are in English and they record the proceedings of national level webinar on prevention and investigation of fishing crimes and national level webinar on cyber security. The third publication is in Hindi and it is a, it is a handbook for investigators. <laughs> this book gives an insight into cyber crimes and it is titled Cyber Aparat or Police Ki Tayyari. Thank you so much, sir. Our Honorable Chief Guest, Shri Ajay Kumar Bhalla, is an IS officer of 1984 batch of Assam and Meghalaya cadets. He is presently posted as Union Home Secretary with the Government of India since 2019. Apart from handling many important assignments in his cadre in the states of Assam and Meghalaya, he has held many positions of prestige in the various ministries of Government of India and he has vast experience and is a very versatile officer. He has been posted as officer on special duty in the Ministry of Home Affairs. He has remained posted as secretary in the Ministry of Power. As director general foreign trade, he has been additional secretary in the Department of Commerce, joint secretary in the Ministry of Coal. He has been director posts and also joint secretary posts in the Ministry of Shipping. Sir, we feel extremely honored with your gracious presence on the dais. Your guidance and benevolent support to the Bureau has always been a source of motivation for the officers of Bureau. The cabin in the hall is keenly waiting to hear you, sir, and I humbly request you to please present the Dr. Anand Surup Gupta Memorial Lecture on the subject, Leveraging Technology for Making India Indian Police Smart, sir. Thank you very much, uh, DG BKR, for such kind words for me. I myself feel that it, I'm not that uh, kind of personality who has been invited to deliver a lecture for such an illustrious person. But I feel honored that uh, I have been given this chance. I'm deeply honored. Honorable illustrious family members of uh, Dr. Lansaru Gupta. I happened to speak to Mr. Madhukar Gupta two days back. I understand that he's not been able to come. DGB PRND, other senior officers of BPRND on the dais, my colleague officers from Ministry of Home Affairs, DG CRPF, DG NIA, IB officers, CP Delhi, and all other senior officers, ladies and gentlemen who are present here, very good morning to all of you. It's an, indeed an onerous task entrusted to me to deliver a lecture on smart policing to this August gathering on this solemn occasion of Dr. Anand Sarup Gupta Memorial Lecture. Mr. Paradi Srivastava explained, I mean, gave a background of his personality that he has been an outstanding officer with a multifaceted uh, experience and qualities. I would like to express sincere, sincere gratitude to late Dr. Anand Suru Gupta, the founder director of BPRND, who gave a grand vision of establishing a premier think tank like this for upliftment of modernization of police force. I also must acknowledge the critical role played by BPRND over the last 51 years, and in this 51 years journey, they have done a lot of good work to augment Indian police systems. Police is one of the most uh, visible arm of the government of government functioning that that is visible everywhere and is part of everyday life also. 
it, it's in any conceivable part of public life, police is also part of it. And especially, I mean, you would have noticed this during the COVID-19 pandemic times, that uh, how the police personnel came out and did duties, which were not supposed to be done by them in normal course, but they extended all help to the citizens and made a good name for themselves. While it is true that we, in government, we are happy doing development of building roads, bridges, hospitals, colleges, industrialization, modernization of everything, but uh, involving private stakeholders. There's so many players in the system in the country, but most important thing is the security environment of the country. So, I mean, I have been given some figures. In the Global Peace Index, there was a loss of $14 trillion in global economy due to violence in the year 2018 in terms of power purchase parity. This figure is equivalent to 11.2% of the world economic activity. So, I mean, my idea is that a security, stability, environment is very, very important for growth of any country. And the police systems is, is very integral part to ensure that this security is available. The 2000 UN Millennium Declaration has emphasized peace and security as prerequisites for poverty reduction, and uh, recent stock taking on the UN Millennium Development Goals reaffirms that countries most affected by conflict, instability, and displacement have fallen lowest in the poverty reduction. So it's a vicious circle which is linked to the stability of the country. BPRND as an institution is so fundamental to the police ecosystem in India. As Mr. Balaji Srivastava mentioned, Mr. Amit Shah's words, that BPRND ke bagayat police ki kalpana nahi ho sakti hai. That also shows his expectations from BPRND ki over the period of time, the way things have changed, BPRND also should keep pace with that. And it's very, I'm mean, very happy to say that the topic today chosen is also very relevant in that growth. This is where I think we may fall behind in the criminal system if we don't keep ourselves updated and become smart policing people. So, right from capacity building of investigating officers in various areas such as cyber security, forensic sciences, modern adoption of modern weapons, gadgets, equipment, so many things, police housing and other things. There are various other things which we are now going to face. Over the decades, Indian police forces have faced different kinds of challenges and they have handled it very well, which include law and order, natural calamities, terrorist activities, left-wing extremism areas, COVID-19 pand pandemic, insurgency from across the border and other white collar crimes, now where the cyber world is also coming in. The nature of crimes is rapidly changing, even though police and public order are state subjects, we are continuously working towards ensuring coordinated action. That is where Ministry of Home Affairs and its agencies are playing a big role in integrating the whole system. I'll speak on ICGS a little later. We have developed an ecosystem for a modern criminal justice delivery system. It is very relevant today that crime and criminals are no longer restricted to state jurisdictions. Traditional crimes are reshaping as crimes are facilitated by cyber security, cyber machinery, and posing new challenges to law enforcement. Cyber world has become part and parcel of our existence, an indispensable part of our actual survival affecting our lives as we have got used to it and too much attached to it. To meet the emerging security challenges and to deliver an effective response, Indian police has adopted the concept of smart policing, where PPRND has also worked quite a lot over the last two to three years. I mean, everybody knows the Honorable Prime Minister has given the word smart policing in his, under, in his vision. Police should have attributes of sensitivity, modernity and mobility, alertness and accountability, responsiveness and reliability, and tech savvy and well trained. I mean, I'm just repeating this. This was a few years earlier, and on which the police setup in the country is now working. The concept of smart policing encompasses entire range of policing activities, 
for prevention and investigation of conventional crimes, cyber crimes, drug menace, terrorism, nexidism, human trafficking, and normal uh, spread of pandemics and other things which they are contending. World over, the law enforcement agencies are under constant pressure to swiftly respond to incidents of varying nature of crimes within their limited resources. In such a scenario, technology provides a solution not only for fighting the crime, but also for prevention of crimes. I feel that in developing the capabilities of our police forces in a holistic manner, covering all aspects, there is an urgent need for leveraging latest state-of-the-art technology to enhance capabilities of the police force, to make them smart, to re remain a step ahead of the criminals, offenders. To achieve this objective, all stakeholders, police establishments, academia, research organizations and industry need to work in tandem and BPRND can play a major role in doing that. As far as police forces are concerned, the realm of training and making members of the police force smart and future ready is much more profound. Our police forces will have to deal with a plethora of conventional and non-conventional crimes. Ours is a diverse country. We have people operating within the country. We have people who are controlled by forces, international syndicates, terrorist activities, people from outside the country. This definitely would require our police systems to be smarter than others. Infusion of technology is necessary to ensure delivery of police services which can meet expectations of citizens too. This would require providing citizens easy access and convenient access to police personnel and a prompt response to redress their issues. Technology is necessary to increase operational efficiency while maintaining lower costs also, improving compliance and accountability in the system. We ourselves have been finding that functioning using e-offices and so many other things developed by the government over a period of time has, has provided us very convenient functioning in dealing with your office work. Similarly, police people using technology can help the citizens much better in much more efficient manner. Advancements in technology which people have been talking about blockchain, cryptocurrency, AI, machine learning, 5G connectivity will be coming. Much more things are going to happen. So on one hand, traditional crimes are becoming more sophisticated with the IT technology being used there. And on the other hand, core cyber threats like a SIM data breach or malware attacks can incapacitate the whole system, the crime transactions in real time and disrupt business activity productivity in the country and all. So this poses a very serious challenge for the law enforcement agencies throughout the country. And our country being diverse, the technology levels or the, the way we have evolved, we have not reached uniformity in full technology advancement throughout the country. It can definitely enhance police functioning, we all understand. We, we have seen examples like emergency response uh, system like our ERSS 112, India app, which allows the responders to track the location of the victim. Now, this is very useful technology, but of course, it's being used all across the country now. But its application, its coverage still needs a lot of work. And uh, Ministry of Home Affairs definitely is, uh, used, I mean, is one of the flagship kind of program we have launched to ensure its coverage fully and integrate it with all other emergency services to the extent possible. Police and law enforcement agencies across the country have definitely been uh, adopting different strategies using new technologies. Police officers need to be able to assess their environment, leverage technology as they pursue public safety, mine the available data for insights, and then sort of understand how what to do to scale up their successes. Traditionally, this work has been tough. However, with the internet of things and CCTV systems and other uh, devices, smart sensors, all can be put together. We need to develop systems where raw data can be analyzed easily by a person in the police station also. 
person in the control room also and will guide the whole system to ensure good quality prevention of crime as well as good quality investigation. As I said, I mentioned earlier, in this, we have developed a big system in the country on interoperable criminal justice system. It provides a platform for end-to-end -end digitization of the criminal justice processes. With the stabilization of core IT systems now, the pillars on which it is functioning, one is the crime and criminal tracking network system, CCTNS we call it. 16,000 plus police stations are now linked to this and all the data of FIRs and crime record is available which can be used by the law enforcement agency. E-prisons, the prisoner's data is also integrated on this. E-forensics is also integrated on this. So you can access reports and e-prosecution and e-courts are the other two pillars which have started functioning now. So it's a very useful system that you can track the whole thing and with the data available, you can deduce many in, uh, positive things out of this. I'll just give an example of two things which we have done. One is we have, uh, from this we have developed a uh, process called investigation tracking system for sexual offenders. So there's a data of sexual offenders or sexual assault cases available out of this CCTNS, which can be used by any law enforcer, uh, enforcement agency for prevention. We have national database of sexual offenders. We have adjournment alert module developed there. If a court prosecutor is taking adjournments again and again, he needs to answer questions. There will be alerts for the senior officers to monitor it. And uh, now on the multi-agency center also we have brought there. Modus apprendi module has also been developed. So th this data, if we start using, it will be very useful for police agencies. I mean, we may call them as smart in that sense but we need to be actually using the thing which we have developed. Crime against women is another important thing in the system. The government gives high priority to women's security. We cannot allow 48% of our population to feel deprived of their rights in the criminal justice. So the data from CCTNS and the emergency response system I was mentioning can definitely be put together. We can identify the hotspots in the country analyze them and then take action for preventing crime activities in such areas. This can be further integrated with the CCTV coverage and other things and the control room senior officers sitting there can definitely analyze that why this particular area the crime against women is more, why it happens like this, what is the modus of trend like and then accordingly police can take action in these areas. Coming to cyber crime management technology, we have many tools developed. We have developed uh, a I4C center also. Uh, all of us are aware of these things. There are deep fakes, mobbed contents. Prevention of cyber bullying is one area we need to focus at. Identification of obscene content in cyberspace and steps to prevent such circulation in the system. Tools to monitor social media use and to perform sentiment analysis to keep control on misuse of social media is also important. We have tools like this, we have been using it, and it needs to be understood by all officers throughout the system. Now, mission of law enforcement is the safety of community. So, involving community is one important thing, which we should not forget while we are migrating to high technology thing. So, we need to build close ties with the community, which are very essential, even in the traditional police outreach, so in technology also it's much easier to do that. For example, many communities are now using apps where citizens can report minor issues such as suspicious activity, giving police real-time intelligence, dynamic prioritization of calls. Now many, many state police have uh, developed these apps and all. So these can be combined with innovative approach and then evidence-based policing can definitely have a much better this thing for the uh, to interact with the community. In addition to digital portals, which all of all the systems have developed, social media can also be used, and some law enforcement agencies are using that. Social media interaction can be both push and pull alerts for citizens. They can also send something. We can also communicate with them. Uh, at this point, I would like to talk about transformational technologies also, like which are some 
high profile work we use artificial intelligence is one area we need to understand now use for crime mapping crime forecasting and also crime investigation as i said there's plenty of data available in ncrb and uh, the cctns and all if we make these applications which ncrb also has been developing over a period of time state police can also use it at times we develop the systems and many states don't use it so my request would be that we need to use this if more data is used more this artificial intelligence will be helpful to all of us then there is predictive analytics which can be used to analyze variable variables like locations individual classes or events what we were talking about like modus operandi bureau has been established to look at how things how crimes happen which areas it happens what type of criminals are there what kind of strategies they have so all this predictive analytics can also be understood developed looking at the data we have video analytics of course is now already many applications are there and we have been using it very regularly so even uh, use of drones for crowded areas and all uh, i understand that artificial intelligence can now even look at the crowd behavior in different crowded places so you i mean uh, a person who's monitoring it on regular basis can always see that which part of the crowd now has started sort of creating trouble or who are the trouble makers who are coming and all so all this the technologies are simple easy to understand but we need to sort of uh, apply our mind and uh, put everything together some countries are experimenting with robots also which can replace police officers for certain tasks like bomb disposal detonating explosives and other things and all uh, drone systems or unmanned aircraft systems are very increasingly used by police to gain career advantage and all but we need to develop our systems for rogue drone system uh, things also others are also criminals are also using we have many examples of arms being smuggled from across the border using drones drugs being smuggled from across the border using drones mhca has been emphasizing the adoption of new technologies in all aspects of policing government is definitely cognizant about the change in technology landscape landscape at unimaginable pace to facilitate adoption of new emerging technologies in police area you will be happy to know that government has recently notified a police technology mission it was uh, announced by honorable prime minister in the last dgig conference at lucknow we have set up a police technology mission uh, there is an empowered steering group under the chairmanship of honorable home minister and all organizations have been made stakeholders first meeting of this group will be held tomorrow and uh, this will give a give big fillip to the technologies in the next 10 years how to uh, modernize the police forces using this technology it will do it. this will mission is supposed to assess technological solutions to explore technology which is available to explore applications which can be used to study different solutions which are available and to focus on special requirements like insurgency affected areas or mega cities or vital installations and all and it provide a networking to the police organization also on the r&d ecosystem of dp r&d i would only like to say that we need to involve which they have done now academic institutions like iits triple iits and iits and people from the industry to be together dp r&d has, has been actively involved in this and has played a significant role the bureau has been bringing out many well researched publications also and i would like to compliment the whole team of uh, bp r&d for that in today's time within the police also we have very good people available young ips officers coming from iits and iits people iits and all so you have a talent pool already available they can definitely become catalyst of change in bringing out technology revolution in the police system so we need to tap on that also uh, while giving stress on making the best out of technology resources i don't want to miss the opportunity to remind you that our country is a diverse country and uh, we have diversity of language demographic culture religion 
So our approach has to be extremely professional and free from any pressures and all. So we need to deal with, depending on the level of development of each area, and we need to train people accordingly. I would also like to remind uh, our officers that we don't want to continue in a situation where police is chasing the criminal, we should be ahead of them, and especially the cyber crimes. And uh, we need to develop our systems much more. Many agencies, law enforcement agencies, are already doing it. But perhaps state police setups also we need to push. I'm happy that BPRND has started establishing a synergy between academia, industry, and law enforcement agencies. We have an excellent example of IIT Kanpur doing good work for us. While we are emphasizing the bigger role police can play. Let's not forget that ensuring the mental well-being and every police person is also our responsibility. We have recently some instances of suicides and all in CAPFs also. We are looking at this and BPRND was working on a, a report on that. So we expect that we need to focus on that also. Uh, as I said, I would like to appreciate the role of police forces during the recent pandemic events of pandemic and the crisis that our police forces as frontline warriors faced have raised many issues concerning our national preparedness. Situation was handled very well by our police forces in a very remarkable fashion. And uh, if one sort of laurels for the police personnel, including Prime Minister praising the police force for this human touch and the advice that we should always be like this. I would like to take this opportunity to pay homage to our policemen who have sacrificed their lives beyond their call of duty. Performance of our police force during the pandemic is a matter of utmost pride for the nation. We need to continuously train our police force and capacity building is the most important part if we want to make them future ready and smart. In conclusion, I would like to say that though technologies, methods and tools may continue to evolve, the core of law enforcement remains the same, to tirelessly work for maintenance of law and order and public safety. Innovation is likely to bring greater insight and effectiveness than before, but same professionalism and discipline, along with the deep-rooted selflessness, sincerity, dedication, and patriotism is required. And that's how we would be successful in the 21st century. So I would uh, reiterate that central comment under the leadership of Honorable Prime Minister is committed to augment support to our police forces in fulfilling their mandate. With these words, I would like to thank the DGBPR and his team for giving me this opportunity to speak on the subject at this solemn occasion of uh, the Dr. Anand Gupta Memorial Lecture. Thank you. Thank you very much. Union Home Secretary Shri Ajay Kumar Bhalla, DG Bureau of Police Research and Development Shri Balaji Shivasta, our four runners in the relay, eminent former DGs and officers of the BPRND, my colleagues in the Bureau, 
director modernization shri karuna sagar and director adams shri bhola shankar jaiswal distinguished heads of organizations senior functionaries of the government and the ministry of home affairs stakeholders and guests from the academia members of the media police officers who have joined from across the country but above all honored guests and family members of our much revered founder director dr anand swarup gupta it is indeed a privilege to propose a vote of thanks to everyone present in our midst today to the union home secretary for consenting to deliver the keynote address to each of the dignitaries who took time out to be here today and equally to the men and women of the bprnd who toiled behind the scenes to curate a memorable occasion memorials are often occasions to revisit the past to reminisce the journey but equally to imagine the moment of creation not only are they opportunities for catharsis but equally to engage with the objectives and intent and recalibrate in the light of emerging concerns i propose a sincere vote of thanks to the union home secretary shri ajay kumar bhalla whose presence here today in the face of multiple assignments of mounting significance is a recognition of this very spirit of engagement thank you sir for delivering the keynote address and flagging criticalities that lie ahead i would like to thank my colleagues dr karuna sagar and shri bhola shankar jaiswal and team bprnd who have clearly read henry ford's prescription that you can't build a reputation on what you are going to do and so chose to build theirs on what they have already done my gratitude to dgp prnd shri balaji shivastav whose eye for the detail has helped flag many an unseen flaw bringing to bear years of professional experience to the final outcomes my sincere gratitude to each of our distinguished guests present here physically as well as those connected virtually your participation despite your other in engagements is deeply encouraging the presence of the distinguished family members of our founder director means the world to us you remain our forever connect with a leader who most of us never had the privilege to work with but just as dr anand swarup gupta lives amongst us in the successes of his illustrious progeny and the smiles and laughter of his grandchildren he equally lives in the accomplishments of the bureau over half a century since its founding i am confident he would be happy to see his professional progenies aspiring to be researchers trainers and teachers for the indian police but even as we dedicate ourselves to this remarkable task we must heed the warning of todd whitaker who said the best thing about being a teacher is that it matters the hardest thing about being a teacher is that it matters every day my gratitude once more to our distinguished audience and stakeholders for being here today and making the occasion befitting to the memory of our founding director dr anand swarup gupta thank you thank you so much sir now i request the gathering to please rise for the national anthem janagana man adhinayak jay hai bharat bhagya vidhata punjab singh 